Hello, everyone, and welcome to another one of our amazing uh, conversations for our Moms on the Trail series in celebration of Mother's Day. Oh, okay. Now we're late. <laughs> uh, my name is Larissa Martinez, and I am the founder and president of Women's Public Leadership Network. We are a nonprofit organization that works to get more women into public office at all levels. And we know that for so many of you out there, especially those that have families, it is a tough decision to, to make the jump into the campaign world, the trying to find appointments. And so we really appreciate being able to highlight um, amazing women leaders that are have made the decision have had to navigate some of those challenges and bringing the conversations to you. So with us today, we're so thrilled to have State Senator Brianne Davis from Arkansas with us. She is going to share a little bit of her leadership journey and also give you all some best practices and uh, some of her best tips and advice on how to kind of navigate this space, especially being a mom on the trail and in office. So with that, um, we are just so excited to have you, Senator Davis. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, and so to kick us off, if you could just tell us, kind of take us back a little bit and tell us how how you came to the decision or the realization that this was something you wanted to do. Was there a particular issue that really motivated you? Was there a person or a conversation? And then how did that look in order to get your family kind of behind the decision? Well, um, really, my running for state Senate was part of um, a journey that I was already on. I mean, I've been involved in politics since I was in high school, just volunteering, like, you know, throwing out candy at parades, putting, you know, signs on, on doors, you know, calling voters, um, trying to get people out to vote. I mean, the, um, from the time I turned 18, I was working the voter, the election polls, um, you know, getting people checked in to be able to go vote. And so it's just something that, um, I've been passionate about generally just voting um, people in office for a very long time. Um, when I was 25 years old, I had a one-year-old at the time, and <clears throat> um, I'm a firm believer that everybody has a role to play in their community, but all of our roles are different. I mean, that's what makes community great. Uh, that is what makes sure that we have all the roles filled and that people are doing their part. So when I was 25, I had a one-year-old and I just really wanted to get involved in his education then. You know, I didn't want to wait till he was in kindergarten. Um, I just thought, you know, our school board at the time, I think only one member of our school board had a child in school. I felt like we needed wow. young, yeah, we needed younger parents on school board um, to really balance the board out. We needed people from all walks of life and all stages of life um, to be representative on that board. So I decided to run for school board and I won um, by 44 votes. It was a um, such a close race and we um, increased voter turnout um, times three in that race. We actually just, we, both of us brought a bunch of, of voters out um, and brought awareness to what was going on in our schools. So I served on the school board for nine years um, and in that time had two more kids. And um, then in 2018, uh, our state senator at the time passed away um, from cancer. And so we ended up having a special election. And it was at that time that I decided to run for state senate. And it was, so it certainly was a family decision. In fact, a week after I filed to run for state senate, I found out that I was pregnant with our fourth child. So there was a, there was a lot going on, um, you know, but it, but like you said, it is a family decision and you just have to say like, are we all willing to sacrifice? And then what does it look like? So we had a lot of conversations with people with younger families that were elected to office um, and what that looked like for them, how they balanced it out. Um, there were not, women with young children really elected um, in our legislature at the time. Um, so we didn't get to have those types of conversations, but we certainly um, had people that we leaned on to figure out how it worked for their family and then ultimately decided if it could work for us. Got it. Got it. Um, so just kind of going back for a brief moment in terms of um, the roles um, and having kind of like these different backgrounds and generations. I'm just curious, do you find that there were several things that you kind of had to break the barrier on being both pregnant and running and also with small children holding 
the school board office, like were folks fairly accommodating to to you or did you feel like you had to kind of um, make the case and, and push for some of these, I guess, modernization um, policies or, or, you know, accessibility <laughs> for lack yeah. of a better term? So they're real. I mean, honestly, I've had great experiences in that sense. Um, so, you know, there were maybe a time or two while I was on school board where, you know, maybe we were going to have a long hearing. I remember there was one time that we anticipated a long hearing when um, the board voted to terminate an employee. And I had, I think, a six week old at the time. And um, and I said, well, if you will take breaks so that I can breastfeed, like I can come, but if not, I can't be there. Like I'm not gonna be able to do it. And they said, no, we're not going to be able to do that. And it wasn't, um, they weren't, I think not trying to be accommodating. I think it was, there was a lot going on and the hearing was going to be very intense and we just didn't know how the timing would work out. Um, so, you know, but really when I came to the Senate, actually, I, um, they gave me like the best office and they were like, here, you have this office right off the Senate floor. So if you need to, you know, go and take care of your baby, then you're good. Um, they were just this very, very accommodating. And I just, I can't speak to any negative experiences that I've had during my time really on school board or in the state Senate um, in that way. Um, as far as uh, with voters and stuff, conversations. I, I mean, I will say I, I did answer questions on the campaign trail that were like, how are you going to, you know, do this job and raise your children? And, you know, my response was always like, listen, I've been working since I was 16 years old. Like, that's what I've done. I work now um, with three, you know, then with three kids. And uh, my husband is a financial advisor. He owns his own business. He's got some flexibility and he's just a great partner. Like he, you know, has the flexibility, picks up the kids, um, takes some places and, um, and wants to, it's, you know, we just have a great, um, relationship where we're both, you know, actively raising our children. And so it's not, um, it's sacrificial on all of us, but, um, he loves being a dad and, and is super involved and hands-on. Um, so, so that usually, if I got questions like that, those are the, that, that was sort of my response. And, and what I've honestly learned over the years is that, um, my harshest critic is oftentimes other women. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're so hard on ourselves and we, and, you know, I think, I think sometimes women look at other women and say, gosh, I can't imagine having capacity to do what she's doing. So I can't imagine that she has capacity to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And I sometimes, because we are harder on ourselves, we're also very hard on each other. So mm -hmm. I have found that that's often my, my hardest critic. And even when it comes to um, mothering, being a mother and doing this work, um, they'll kind of, I've had some pretty, you know, I've had some harsh comments over the years um, about that. So um, that's sort of been my experience. Yeah. Which, I mean, I think it's unfortunate, but to your point, it is reality. And we hear that from women um, that come through our program all the time. And it, it is unfortunate because I think, I, I know this sounds awful, but what a better example to set than to show that public service matters that much to you and serving your community matters that much that you are putting that forward. And sure, there's some sacrifices, but having that community of support like your husband and I'm sure other family and friends that are there to kind of help pick up some pieces while also allowing you the opportunity to share the role and be able to come back home and still have good um, quality time with your family is um, is so important and it is possible, which is why we love having folks like you on, on these uh, programs so that you show that it is possible to have that balance. Um, and it's great to hear that they were so accommodating in the state legislature. It's one of the things that we work on um, behind the scenes um, with WPLN. Um, and it's, you know, I, I hate to say it, but we at least try to be one of the organizations that provides free childcare at our in-person events. We provide motherhood rooms. And the reason I say I hate to say this because there's it's amazing how we're one of the few that does. And it feels like it should be more of the norm that you, of course, provide a motherhood room wherever you are. <laughs> like, of course, you have, you know, if you can do child care, great for both men and women, right? All of those pieces. Um, but going back to you uh, mentioning that your husband was active and engaged and still is, I would imagine, in, in the work that you're doing. 
Um, did he and your kids participate in certain aspects of the campaign? What did they do kind of to, were they on the trail with you or did you kind of keep them, keep that part separate? Just kind of curious how you manage that. Yeah, it was all hands on deck. So <laughs> nice. um, and um, my husband was calling voters and, and all of that stuff. So they would help me stuff you know, invitations, if we were sending stuff out for a fundraiser, um, whatever it was, it, it truly, it truly was an all hands on deck. And, um, so it has been a interesting experience, you know, watching them grow up sort of in that space. And, and as they get older, they see and hear more, um, of the, the negative and the positive that people have to say about you when you're an elected official. And so, um, I think it's been just, I think it's been a great experience from them. Not that it's always been good or easy, um, but that's a great life experience. Um, and, you know, I think lessons that they'll carry with them into adulthood. And so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so fun. I'm glad that they enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. That's so fun. Um, so I know that you had mentioned too that, uh, cause by the way, I'm taking notes. If you see me looking down, it's cause I'm taking notes about the things that you're saying, <laughs> because I, I want to make sure that we capture it and kind of put it out uh, for others as we, as we go. But you mentioned that when um, you were making the decision to run, that you had talked to other folks that had managed this and balanced these priorities uh, in these positions previously. So is there anyone that you um, consider a mentor or you've looked up to in these leadership roles? Um, anyone that you feel like really kind of helped uh, guide or shape um, how you've managed uh, to get where you are and also manage this piece of your life? Well, I think there's, uh, I do have a broad um, support system and, and friends and people that I, you know, feel like will give me honest feedback on things. So, I mean, I will say, I don't know that there's any one person that uh, I look, looked up to or maybe specifically mentored me, but um, I would say that I was you know, never felt like it was something I couldn't do. I, you know, grew up in, in a household with parents that went to work every day, worked extremely hard and, you know, just, and they were raised out in California and they just had a, you know, a view of life that you just, you know, we were just, we just worked hard. I mean, I turned 16 years old and I got a job and saved up money to pay cash for my first car. And, you know, it's just, that's, that's sort of just the family I grew up in. You just go mm -hmm. out and you work and you get it done. Um, and so I, I would say there are plenty of, you know, great examples of, of women in our state or not really, I mean, yes, in our state, but really across my community that I'd seen run for city council or quorum court uh, and even the state Senate and, um, you know, watch them balance it and do it and really be a great voice. And so, um, I just, you know, have that group of people I can talk to and get honest feedback from, which is hard. Uh, politics to always, you know, people will say it to you plainly and honestly. Yeah. So how important do you think it is to have that kind of community of support and before you run and then also to continue cultivating it while you're holding office or continuing to campaign? I, I honestly don't know how you do it without it. I think, you know, politics is an, an interesting place. And um, if you are not very grounded when you get elected, um, and really understand what you're walking into when you walk down to the Capitol, then I think you could be swept up quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, having a new title and people suddenly needing your time and attention. Um, and they, you know, use a lot of flattery to get those things. And I just think if you are not prepared for that, and if you don't have people speaking honestly into your life and saying, you know, just speaking truth into your life and, and helping keep you grounded. I don't know how you really do this job well if you don't have that and really can keep that sense of um, just humbleness and um, and just being grounded. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm going to pause for just a moment and remind folks that if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, our team members behind the scene will make sure that we see them and get to them. Um, but meanwhile, I'm going to continue and take prerogative and ask my questions. Um, so in terms of um, difficult situations, I know you had mentioned just kind of the sometimes the tough comments or the tough questions that people may ask you on the trail. But was there any one particular um, like, was it debates or was there a grassroots event or something that happened that really felt like it, um, kind of stretched the limits of, um, 
what you had dealt with previously and kind of required you to, um, you know, really kind of double down with your support system and make sure that everyone, you know, felt like they knew what to do and that it felt um, like a good learning experience? I would probably say that, you know, one of the tougher things I've um, been through is running the Lands Act last year, which mm. was the landmark piece of legislation really yeah. that our governor had championed mm. on the campaign trail for a couple of years. And it was her um, first, you know, huge initiative and piece of legislation. And I was the lead sponsor on that, mm -hmm. which I'm so proud um, and grateful that I had the opportunity. And I, and I don't, you know, so, but it was hard because it was uh, so big, right? Like in the yeah. sense media and people talking about it um, because it truly was um, a piece of legislation to reform education across our state. And that was something that um, our governor and our legislature felt like needed to be done. We couldn't really tinker with it. We needed to make some bold moves. And so with that, though, with carrying a load like that, um, you really broaden where you get your criticism and feedback from. And so I would say that was the intensity of it. Um, you know, I have very thick skin. You have to have thick skin in politics and uh, you got to kind of let things roll off. Um, but I think just the length of, of the debate and the things that went on around it, I think just the intensity of it was something that I had not experienced before. Uh, previously, my kids were hearing about it in school. And, you know, so um, it was just a little heavier than normal. And and yes, I mean, I think the the people around me stood around me and um, supported me and and it was great and and like I said I'm proud of it um, I'm so grateful that I got to run that so there's not regrets in that sense I don't right. uh, I try to make decisions based on if I think they're right and if I can like you know I say I'm the one that has to sleep with my own decisions and so I always want to do what I think is the right thing and um, and I think that that was absolutely the right thing um, and I'm proud to have been a small part of it but you know, people are very brave behind keyboards and, and say a lot of things. And so that was one of the bigger things that I've dealt with. Yeah. Well, congratulations. It is. I mean, it's tough to get things passed. I don't think people realize, you know, and it's tough on purpose. It's meant to be, you know, a um, to have debate and to really get it into a place where everyone feels like it's a good a good piece of uh, legislation. But it takes a while. So congratulations on getting that over the finish line. Um, well, good. Um, so one thing too, that, uh, I forgot to ask you in advance is, um, how old are your kids now? They are 16, 12, 11, and five. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite the breadth. That's quite the breadth. So, um, one thing that I was curious about, because I think it, you know, we obviously there's so much attention on social media and, things going online, and especially as you mentioned, having a debate that was as, you know, um, big uh, as the bill, uh, the topic was, uh, how did you prepare or how did you kind of navigate social media with your kids? Because I know it's hard if they see things on there about you being attacked or things or lies being told or things that are just unpleasant. And I was just curious kind of how you manage that piece with your kids. Um. Well, our kids don't have social media, so we helpful. Uh, our fifteen-year-old, <laughs> yeah, we just let him get it. Get Instagram. Okay. Instagram account is under mine, so I have access to it at all times, and um, and so yeah, so we just, you know, that's a choice we've made, and we don't have them. So you yeah. know, more really just around town. We live in a smaller community, and just. But we just talk about things. I mean, I have them, um, if I'm going to be on the news that night, like mm -hmm. we all sit down and watch the news story and then we talk about it. Like people, and I always tell them, I say, people are saying this. And this is the reason that I think they're saying it. But this is what, you know, I'm saying about it. And this is why. And I try to really always, you know, and, and you know, they're, of course they're defensive. And uh, just like I am a family, if someone says something, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, well, they shouldn't, you know, say this. Or, and I say, well, they're not. Um, they're not, you know, wrong or they're not saying it for mean reasons or this is why they're saying it because from their point of view, these things they think they believe to be true or this is the reason that they're, this is where they're coming from on it uh, because I just, you know, I don't want to be the 
you know, we, I see, you see a lot of families at home and, and um, you see a lot of families and they just are critical of people simply for disagreeing with them. And Mm I use my kids that way. I want to say, here's their point of view. I disagree with them and this is why, but this is why they think they're right, or this is what they believe. Um, And I'll try to tell them like this, this debate is about truth and things that aren't true, but this debate is about opinions or feelings and, and there's differences. Um, Mm -hmm. So we just, it really, that's why I say like, it's not all going to be positive. It's not that they've had a great positive experience my entire time in the legislature and the older they get, the harder it is for them. Um, But they're going to carry into adulthood great life lessons. And I think hopefully we'll be able to balance and, and disagree with people in civil ways and have hard conversations but walk away um, and go get coffee with that person. And it'd be no big deal. Yeah. Even if they just had an intense, you know, debate or disagreement. And yeah. so that's a great thing. Yeah. I mean, that's so important, especially today. I feel like so many kids are not growing up with the critical thinking skills that to your point, you don't have to agree with someone, but you at least have to have some curiosity of where they're coming from and why at the very least to, to be able to understand how to disagree with them in a polite way, you know, in a way that feels constructive. Um, so I think that's amazing that, that you're taking the time to do that with your kids and preparing them and also creating that, um, resiliency, right. And the, the ability to cope with, with tough feelings and tough, um, situations. I mean, that's, again, something that, um, I don't think a lot of kids get the opportunity to today in quite the same way, right? So there are, again, the pluses and minuses of having um, a mom in public service and being so high profile. Um, but, you know, I think you're, that's amazing that you're able to do that. So, um, so thank you for leading on that. That's, that's great. Um, so just kind of uh, starting to kind of close out a little bit here, what advice would you give or what piece of wisdom, if you had known it previously would have been helpful <laughs> that you would give to those that are thinking of running um, at any level or for any position? Um, yeah, just curious. I just, you know, I think you, just have to do it. And I know that sounds so cliche, but, but the truth is yeah. people love to talk about running for office or whatever, but they will never put their name on the ballot. And it is scary to yeah. do it because yeah. you could lose publicly, you know, and yeah. that, you know, that intimidates and scares people. But it's like, I tell my kids, like they'll say, you know, they'll have something big coming up and they say, but I'm just nervous. I don't know if I want to do it. I'm nervous. And I say, that's good. If you're nervous, that means that you care about it. And so that's a good thing. Like everyone's nervous and you just channel that nervousness and remind yourself, I'm nervous because I care a lot. And Mm -hmm. how can I channel that to move forward and do it? Um, And, and I think you just have to say like, that's great. That means I care a lot and I want to move forward with it. And so I, I have a, you know, there's a few things I, I learned during, um, when I was pregnant with my fourth kid, um, actually during the week of early voting, I was sitting out in the parking lot calling voters and I got a call from my doctor and they told me that my daughter would have down syndrome. We did like the early testing. Um, they, you know, they call it when you're, 34 or older and pregnant, they call it geriatric maternal age. So I was 34 <laughs> and I was geriatric. And so um, anyway, so had me do all the testing and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm actually so grateful that I did. I had, I did not do it with my other kids and, um, and I did with her and, and I just, so, but no one even knew during my campaign that I was during my primary, that I was pregnant, uh, much less that I was, um, you know, going to have a child with Down syndrome. And so I was processing a lot, um, Mm -hmm. almost alone. My very close circle knew, um, but it was a, you know, pretty emotional time period Mm -hmm. because there was just so so much going on. Um, And so I I started following a lot of different, you know, moms and people who had kids with Down syndrome and just learning about it and learning how to advocate and all those things. And there's a line I read in, in one of the books called The Lucky Few, And she said, just because she said, just because things are hard, just because circumstances are hard, doesn't mean they're bad. Mm. And, you know, I just, I love that. I think, I think there's so many things that we deal with in life that are hard, 
Uh, but that doesn't mean they're bad. And mm-hmm. I, I carry that with me. And I think other, you know, and I tell my kids that now all the time. Um, if you're go- going through something hard or challenging, um, even if you are elected and maybe you're getting some harsh criticism or feedback, um, we don't run for office to make easy decisions and to do nothing. And if people are never critical of you um, or never saying things, then you're probably not doing anything. So, yeah. you know, like we're going to hear the critic. Yeah. That's okay. And just because it's a hard time doesn't mean it's a bad time. And I was trying to find, there's a, a book I read and um, I don't want to say the wrong name of the author, but he was telling a story that I loved. He He's telling a story. It's either Donald Miller or Ronald Miller. So please don't jump at me in the comments, <laughs> but you can say the correct author. Uh, I just didn't have it marked down, but he tells a story um, about his time out in California with his family and they're, they wanted, they, they all got together and they said, we should start a parade um, in our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Let's start a parade. And so they go out and they knock on all the doors of their neighbors. And they said, we have one rule in our parade. And the rule is nobody gets to watch the parade. You all have to participate. So they knock on the doors of all their neighbors and they're like, come on, we're doing a New Year's Day parade. It's at this time. <laughs> you know, dress up, make a float, you know, ride your bike, whatever it is, but you don't get to watch. You have to participate. And the whole neighborhood came out and this was years ago and they continued the parade for years and it grew year after year. More people kept coming. They all wanted to participate. And I would say the same thing is true in politics, in community and in life. We, we live in community and you know what? We don't get to sit and watch. We have an obligation as moms, as parents, um, as women in our community that we've got to get out and do something. Mm -hmm. There are injustices happening around us, all around us. There are organizations that need volunteers all around us. There are cities that need help. Like it doesn't just have to be running for office, but it is something And if you are sitting on the sidelines, if you're posting on social media, complaining about leadership where you live or in your schools, Mm -hmm. shame on you. You don't get to sit on the sidelines and watch. As women, I think we are called, as members of our community, we are called to participate. And I loved that analogy because Mm -hmm. so much work to be done. So much work. And people are begging for people to come help them do the work. And, um, that, that story sat with me so well, like we don't get, we are going to show up to a parade, but we're in the parade. We're not sitting on the sidelines waving. And I, that is my challenge women and to young moms, because there are not enough young moms, um, or moms of young children in office or running for office. And our daughters, we have a point of view and a perspective that we have to share and it shapes policy. I mean, mm-hmm. if, we're thinking, if we're debating legislation on policies for daycare and what teacher to baby ratio looks like or what pre-K looks like, you know what? People are speaking from their experience um, from 20 years ago or from having never dealt with it. And if we don't have moms with young children in that space, you know, giving voice to the debate, um, then our voices are not representative in the policy and the legislation we pass. So mm-hmm. we have to participate. We have to show up and say, we will be in this parade. Yeah. I love that. And um, I feel like I may steal that for a bumper sticker. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I love that. That's, that's great. And that's such an inspirational way to, to kind of close this out. But I have one final thing that I wanted to, to ask you, which is how are you celebrating Mother's Day? Because that's coming up. I know. I'm like, when is it? I don't even know. <laughs> like, what day is Monday? Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. Um, we will not be playing baseball this weekend, so that we I won't be at a ball tournament. <laughs> Often on Mother's Day, to be, but I think I've got a small uh, flower farm um, oh. out where we live, and I think we'll probably be um, putting some eucalyptus in the ground and getting flowers ready for for the summer. So I think we'll just be hanging out at the house all together, which is a nice thing that we don't get to do often with four kids, all of us running in different directions and yeah. hanging out with ourselves. It'll be great. That sounds amazing. That sounds great. But um, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time 
to share all of these amazing stories and words of wisdom. Um, again, it's it's not easy to to jump in, and I think your point is just so uh, valid and needed to be repeated over and over again, which is that you don't necessarily have to hold office. There are all these other ways to get engaged, um, but if you don't step up then you won't be heard. And I think we tend to, as a community, sometimes just rely on government to solve everything or the, the other guy to solve everything. And that's just not cutting it these days. That's one of the reasons why, to your point, there's all these things happening, all these challenges and issues and things that need to be addressed. So I appreciate that you stepped up and that you're continuing to step up and that you're so engaged and um, so supportive of other women getting involved and, and getting engaged. So thank you so much for spending some time with us, for sharing um, all of your insights. And we wish you a very happy Mother's Day. And uh, to all of those watching, uh, please follow us. Uh, go to the website that's in, our, uh, that's in the chat. We'd love to have you engaged in our programs, uh, but we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much, Senator. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.